Sometimes there's topics I really don't like to talk about because there's certain denominations or certain parts of the body of Christ that likes to get involved in that area, in that arena. And sometimes I think they're carried away about it and they don't have enough balance to appreciate what God wants to do because they get carried away about what they think they should do about it. And one of those is evil, you know. There is a force out there, and it's called evil. It's not a, it's not a spirit. There's no such thing as a spirit of evil. It's not a, a being. There's no one person that is evil, and then everything after that is the son of evil or anything like that. But there's a, a power of evil, and it tends to influence people in a. <laughs> evil way. <laughs> it's actually a rebellious nature. It's, it's all... Rebellion is part of evil. Evil is the destruction of all that God has created in order to recreate itself in its own image. And if you've ever come into contact with evil itself, you know how malicious it is. It's, it's satanic. It is. It's the power of the counterfeit power of what God has done as far as love or peace is concerned and the counterfeit for Satan is evil and well evil <laughs> there's a lot to evil I don't want to get into it but whenever you run into it you know there's a difference between an evil person or a person influenced by evil and a person who's just mean or pagan or stupid or biased or in some kind of fleshy attitude because evil goes beyond that. Evil is self-destructive and corporeally destructive. It wants to annihilate, destroy, and subvert what God is doing. Evil is a force that is at work in the world. People participate in it at times and sometimes you run into people that, frankly, have given themselves over to it. And at some point in time, they usually commit suicide. Some of that is sadly able to be remedied by even casting out demons, even praying that God would separate them and put his protection around them so that the evil would slowly dissipate from them. We all will encounter evil at some point in time. And God doesn't want us to be fearful of it. Although, for those who have encountered evil, you know how you felt. And it wasn't, it wasn't great confidence and it wasn't great fear either. It was kind of a, kind of yucky, you know? Kind of like, no, you weren't, you weren't the best. You weren't the worst, but you weren't you. And God wants to reassure us that in these latter days, that in this last generation, evil is going to keep being made more obvious by the circumstances of life around us as slowly God begins to withdraw his spirit from the world, as he begins to prepare for that time of judgment to come upon the world. In a lot of ways, ways we deal with reaping what we sow and circumstances of our life and people likewise sometimes whether they be murderers or whether they be child molesters or whatever it may be of sin suffer consequences and that's influenced by evil but it's not evil itself it's it's sinful it's wrong it's negative it's pagan it's it's disgusting but it's really just lust of the flesh and pride of life and you can boil down some of the, the base natures of what they are. But when you get into evil, evil is malicious. It goes out of its way to plan, plot, deceive, and coordinate 
against the things of God. Some people like to try to say that evil is false religions, like Islam, or, oh gosh, or some other world religion that doesn't teach God in the same way that we know Jesus and the Son of God and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit as. And that's not evil. You know, um, people that believe in the martyrdom idea, the Shiites or the Sunnis or the Sufis, Sufis, Sufis don't actually believe in martyrdom, but those that believe in martyrdom are actually just following in a way what Jesus was talking about when he said, lay down your life, you know, but they take it into a level that is completely distorted and that's where the power of evil has influenced, you know, their religion to take a wrong turn and, you know, they won't wind up in heaven with virgins, but, you know, they become unfortunately deceived and that's that's not what evil really is evil is a direct manifestation of the power of satan to deceive and create in a person a willingness on their part to be a part of that satanic capability to influence and cause people to follow after evil itself it is self meeting it is cancerous cankerous it works on itself and it feeds on itself it's evil it's something that's not a light subject jewish sages in many writings have discussed evil in various ways and sometimes you know it seems like they they got a good handle on it sometimes it seems like they kind of went off and same thing in Christianity is I read a lot of books on evil and the nature of evil or power and some of it sometimes is good and some of it sometimes is just somewhat off. But God never intended for us to deal with evil. God intended for us to call upon the name of the Lord. God intended us for each and every one of us to have such a personal relationship that no one, the evil one, and nothing of evil would befall us, but that rather he would be able to protect us and keep us even in the palm of his hand so that he could cup it, as it were, and hold us in the inner of his, his hand. Practice protection. Fear no evil, I have conquered evil. It has power to hurt only those who do not place themselves under my protection. This is not a question of feeling, it is an assured fact. All you have to do is to say with assurance that whatever is it is cannot harm you and I and as I have conquered it. Children, and not only the big but little things of life, be sure of my conquering power. I have overcome the world. No evil befell me, but that which was done was accomplished for good, as God intended it to do, for even in my death the resurrection came, for even in my suffering healing was brought about. Know that all is well. Be sure of it. Let no evil influence cause you to be influenced. Learn it until it is unfailing and instinctive within you, but practice it in the quiet small things. Trust in him in the little ways and you'll find him in the big ways. And you'll find that you're able to do it easily, naturally, lovingly, and trusting in the big things of life. A lot of times, we have to give ourselves over to something in order to do it. We have to literally take the first step, as it were, to go to the left or to go to the right. The direction we go is our own decision to make. We can choose to do what is good. We can choose to do what is wrong. <laughs> as a matter of fact, <laughs> most of us, most people that I know don't even know how to make a decision. They're like, well, I don't know. What do I do? I don't know. And they juggle it. 
God never said that we would be left without being able to make a decision. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who prayed a thought, but give it to all men liberally. Seems to me, that means we could ask for wisdom, we could ask for direction, we could ask which way to go. So, in not knowing which way to go, it's really our problem and not God's because God promised us he would lead us and he promised he would direct us. So, if you want to go to the left or you want to go to the right, all you got to do is ask. Because once you ask, you'll know whether you're doing good or whether you're doing evil. Because once you've already asked God and he's told you and you don't do what he said to do, then I think you're going to find what you're doing is evil in his sight. And since he's the one who knows what the power of evil is and who the evil one is and how we're influenced by it, Maybe we ought to check in and trust him to tell us what is right and what is wrong and how not to do evil.